computer. So first of all, congratulations. Um, not only get, passing your math test, getting your diploma and passing your ASVAB test, any advice you would give to your fellow classmates on the math exam? Yeah, man, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without, without you, man. Um, you're, you're, you was in my head the whole time. Don't, you know, <laughs> don't give up and just continue, keep your head in it. Keep taking these practice tests. Know the, exactly. know the calculator, you know? Um, before this, I was taking classes in the library and they never taught the people how you teach. Okay. About the calculator. Like they never even brought that up. You wow. Know? There was teaching on a different level where you had to like figure it out, but you made it much easier, understanding it much better. Without you, I don't know if I could do this, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, um, congratulations again. Um, again, that's this is why I created that ebook. This is why, um, you know, a lot of times people will put it off because the ebook is kind of long. But I would say, you know, I would use the practice test from GD to focus on concepts. I was, you know, I got about 10 practice tests that's free that don't cost you anything. You just got to put the work in. So one thing I like what you did was you was on Schoology like every day. Yeah. You was every day. And then you would use that feedback that I would give you. And then you would take it again to make sure you knew how to do it. So that's one thing um, I definitely would recommend is make sure that you got certain concepts down before you move on to the next thing. So again, congratulations again. Thank you, man. <laughs> that's Thank everybody you. giving my hand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, one, one thing I would like to. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Keep taking the tests. That's what I did. Keep taking the tests. And when you're going to go take your test, it's easy transition. Like you're still in practice mode and it, it, it's e effortless, you know? Yeah. Y yes. That's yes. Good. Guaranteed. Yes. Yes. So we're going to start off. That's I, I, I love to start off class like this. Um, yes. I had, a, I had a, quite a few people last week pass. If you saw the little notifications, had a, quite a few people pass. Um, I know in the state of Pennsylvania, in the city of Philadelphia, we'll be having a citywide graduation. So mm. um, what I would also check for is in your state or in your city to see if they're going to have a citywide or a statewide um, graduation. Because that's something um, uh, a, a student told me one time. He said I had, I had never experienced a graduation ever. So for him to be able to experience a graduation is something he re re really held dear to his heart. So again... Yeah. I want to help all of you pass this math exam so he can um, get that diploma. And, and most graduations are in June. So um, kind of if, if, if you're looking forward to being in that June graduation, again, set that schedule. Make a schedule for yourself, a study schedule, so you know how much you're going to be studying um, each day. So you can uh, allot that time each day that you're going to be studying. That's the one thing I, I re would recommend for anybody in any type of academic um um, goals, whether it's GD, high set, uh, SAT, whether it's college, community college, whether it's uh, the ASVAB, whether it's the T's test, whether it's community college, I would set a schedule so I know when I'm going to study each day. All right, so that's enough of that. Any questions or anything that people have been working on during the week that they need assistance in? Anybody? You, you got anything on Say that again. You got, uh, you got anything on fractions? Because that's what I like mostly need help with. Okay, well, this what I would this what I would tell you about fractions. Okay. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time on fractions. Why, Mr. Tizzy, why are you saying that? Because fractions give me the most difficulty. That's exactly why. Yep. Because listen, <laughs> uh, the on the GED exam, the only time you cannot use your calculator is for the first five. So what are they going to ask you in the first five? How to change a mixed number to an improper fraction, an improper mm. fraction to a mixed number. Besides that, you can use your calculator. Now, I'm not saying I don't want you to learn fractions, but to pass the GD exam, since you can use the calculator except for the first five questions, you don't need to. And this is why one of the lessons in the ebook is fractions. So whether you're multiplying, mm -hmm. adding, Improper to mix, change into a decimal. I show you step by step how to do all of it. 
Um, so that's what I would say because this is listen, and this is and well, let me pause the recording for a second. Let me pause. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's um uh, again in my ebook, I'll show you how to do everything with fractions. Everything. Okay. Divide, multiply, add, subtract, improper to mix, mix to improper, fractions to decimals, fractions to percents. I'll show you how to do it all. So on that section, as you run through it, you'll have a, a conceptual understanding how to use the fractions, when to use the fractions. But for the most tense and purposes, if you know the decimal fraction percent equivalents, um, I had a young man who was taking his high set. He said, Mr. Tense, I, won't I, I don't understand fractions. I said, well, how'd you pass your exam? He said, I went in there and what I did was I just used all the decimal equivalents. So if I had five and a quarter, I knew a quarter was 0.25. So in my calculator, I put 0.25. Again, what is the GD going to give you? The GD is giving you common fractions. One half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one eighth, one ninth, one tenth. Now for college or accuplacer, then you know they give you the three sixteenths and the five seventeenths and all that kind of stuff. But for mo for the most part, the GD you get in common fractions, and I will be prepared for that. Um, and just I would use the ebook to go through that fraction decimal percent section, and you should be fine. Believe me, you, you a lot of us start to make a lot more sense as you do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and that's just that's just that's my personal opinion. Um, I've been doing this since 2015, and like I said, I'm back to 100% pass rate on the math exam. Um, so um, that's just giving you my two cents. But again, you're you're an adult; you can make your decisions and decide. And that's what that's I think that's the fault that most adult education classes actually make because they spend so much time on fractions. On the GD, you might have one, two, three, four problems with fractions. You're going to have a volume problem with fractions. You're probably going to have an area problem with fractions. You will have one of the first five um, mixed number to improper fraction, improper fraction, mixed number, and put fractions doesn't percents in order. So to me, it's not worth spending that four or five, six weeks on. I will learn how to use the calculator. Hopefully that answers your question. Any, anybody else says something? Now, if you got a specific question, I still can answer. If you got a word problem or something you want to go over, is it something you quickly wanted to know how to do? Um, with fractions? No, it was just like the fractions in general because I go to another school also and I was doing a fractions problem and I just couldn't get it. I don't remember the problem basically, but... So, so what I want you to do is when you have those problems like that, that you have issues with, bring those problems to this class. So I can okay. actually, so I can show you like for, cause there's so many things you can do with, with fractions. Um, but again, but fractions now, so let me ex explain something to you. I have fractions one. is really, oh, you have one? Yeah. What is it? It was uh, 24 um, and then the line and then the bottom one which Z minus 12 and that, and then it equal three, to a three per minute, no, equal to three, sorry. Hold on, say that again, you said 24 over what? 24 over Z minus 12. Over Z? Yeah. Okay. Um, minus 12. Minus 12? No, on the bottom, it was minus 12 also. Z minus 12? On the bottom, mm -hmm. Like that? And equal to three. Okay, so now this is not really a fractions problem. So this is a little different. This is a little different. This is not yeah, this, this, this is doing what the lady told me with the packet. Okay, so so, so now, this stuff up. This is not. This is now. You have to understand those concepts. But now, this is a <laughs> rational number. So a fraction is a rational number. Rational number okay. is just anything that can be written as a fraction, right? So what we want to do is one thing you want to remember is. This is a ratio, right? Mm -hmm. And a, pro a proportion is two ratios set equal to each other. So what really is, this is like three over one. You understand mm -hmm. that? So what mm -hmm. you can actually do to solve this is you cross multiply. So three times Z minus 12 is equal to one mm -hmm. times four, which is 24. Understand that? Mm-hmm. 
So now you do the distributive property and do three times Z, which is three Z, and you do three times minus 12, which is negative 36. Do you understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, equal 24. And now this is a two-step algebraic equation. In order yeah. to get Z by itself, you have two terms on that left side. You have three Z and you have minus 36. So since I want to get that Z by itself, I need to get rid of that other term that does not have the Z. So that's the minus 36. Mm -hmm. So you want to do the opposite operation of minus 36, which is plus 36. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do on one side of the equation, you're going to do on the other side. Do you understand that? Yep. And then you have 3Z, the 36 cancel, you bring down the equal, and then you have 36 plus 24, which is 60. Mm -hmm. Understand that? Yep. Now, again, you're always asking yourself, the Z is not by itself. So in order to get the Z by itself, I need to get rid of the 3. But what's happening with the Z? It's being multiplied by 3. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide by 3. Whatever we do on one side, we do on the other, we get Z is equal to 20. Now, what we're going to do is now we're going to test it. We're going to check it. This is a part of math that's very important. We're going to take that 20 and plug it back up in here. So 24 equal 20 minus 12 is equal to 3. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 3 equals 3. Check. We know we're right. And that's so even though it looks like a fraction and you could call it a fraction, um, that's how you would do that problem. So you would cross multiply and then solve for Z. You understand that? Mm -hmm. That That is actually a very good question. And the reason why it's a very good question, because a lot of times on the GD, what they also will do is they will have a problem like this and have you solve for Z. And another question that they also like asking is during the steps. In order to solve this, where's the mistake? That's also another prevalent question on the GD. So again, I would probably go over this problem if you did not understand this problem. I want to make sure I would go over it step by step to make sure I understand this problem because it's, it's a lot of concepts in here. It's the cross multiplication. It's a distributive property. It's solving a two-step equation and then checking your work. So it's a very, actually a very good problem. I'm glad you uh, gave us that problem. Thank you. Can squish, Go ahead, Judy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was talking to myself. Sorry. <laughs> anybody, anybody else have a, a, a problem or a concept they needed some um, clarity on? Word problems, period. So, yeah. Well, yep. well, that's like saying math. Period. You can't say word problems. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Word exactly. problems. Like, give me <laughs> word problems and what type of problem? Um, uh, algebraic. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Schoology because what now? What you, what you want to remember is Schoology is a free site that I cre created, and you can use it as many times as you want. And if there's any time that it tells you you can't, you just let me know and I can increase the number of times you take it. So um, uh, let's yeah, look at I, you said. I signed up for the school again. Awesome. Okay, so we have algebraic equation and algebraic equations. So we're gonna go here and let's see what we can find, what type of word problems okay. we have here. Let's see. And I don't know why my computer's acting so slow. Let's go to questions. I've also added a, a quite a few word problems. See if we can find some here. Nope, I don't have any here. Okay, okay, I don't have any word problems here. Let me go here and let's see. Let's go resources. I just created a bunch of questions today. I literally just created like 75 new questions. Let's see. Oh man. In what part? I did functions. I did volume and surface area. Here we go right here. Let's try this one right okay. here. Nice okay. word problem here. And then what we're going to do together, because listen, we're all in this together. As you, as you 
I'm coming to this class on money. What you realize is people are coming in, they're finishing, they're moving on, but you want to do that same thing. So you want to stay focused. But one thing you want to remember is that we're doing this together. So the questions you have, don't be scared to ask them because somebody else might have that same question. Let's look at this problem. A covered water tank is in the shape of a cylinder. The tank has a 60 inch diameter and a height of 78 inches. To the nearest square inch, what is the capacity of the water tank? Wow. Mm, mm, mm. I just made it, uh, you know, I made, again, I, I made a bunch of questions. Okay. Okay. So, any type of word problem. So I want you to hear me in your ear when you're tasting the exam. What's the first thing that you're doing when you read this word problem? What are you, what are you trying to get? You see what they're giving you. Right. So that's the first thing you should be doing. Identify your given identify your givens okay so what are some of the givens they gave you the diameter is 60 inches the diameter is 60 inches what else they gave you the height of the height is 78, 78 and yeah what else um well it's a cylinder they gave you the shape that is important sharon yes so you identify the most, the, the, the important givens in this question. The first thing is that it's a cylinder. That's the first thing. Now, yeah. because you know it's a cylinder, the next thing, the given is this right here, the, the capacity. capacity. What yeah. formula do we use to find how much something holds? It's the volume, B. It's the volume. Volume. So that's very important. So identify this as a cylinder. Identify that you have a diameter of 60 inches. Your height is 78. And the, the, the last key thing is that capacity means how something, how much something holds, which is the volume. Now, yeah. if we use our formula sheet, can anybody tell me the formula to find the volume of a cylinder? Uh, pi R squared. Pi R squared. Nope. For the volume, you said? For the volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, V, and I think it equals a, pi R squared times a, a yes. D. So you forgot pi the R squared H. This is what I want you to remember. Okay? This is the formula. Now, I heard somebody say capital B times H. Remember, Volume is three dimensions. Yeah. Okay. So now let's draw a picture of a cylinder. Okay. I need you to understand this because a lot of times people just want to remember formulas. But if you don't know how you got those formulas, you don't know when to use them. This is why word problems give people so much difficulty. So what you want to do is remember, if we look at the bottom of this cylinder, what shape do we have? Circle. A circle. A circle. And if you should know, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Mm -hmm. Now, now, so what you're doing is you're taking the area of the base. That's what that capital B stands for. The area of the base, which is a circle, which is pi r squared, and then multiplying it by the height. Right. If you have a rectangle, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. That's width. Mm -hmm. But if you add a height to it, that's about that's the value. Now it's length times width length times, width. times width. height. Uh, yeah. So the volume is three dimensions. Yeah. So the area of the base times the height. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now let me erase some of this here. Now, listen to me. I'm not going to waste my time. I don't need to write anything down because I've been using my calculator. I went through the whole 17 lessons that Mr. Tinsley gave me. So I know how to use this calculator like the back of my hand. So I'm not going to waste time. I don't even have to uh, uh, use the whiteboard. I don't need any scrap paper. But now, this is my problem, though. And I'm a little confused here. Let me write this down before I put this because I, I can't, I'm gonna have to hide it. So we said our diameter was 60. Mm -hmm. We said our height 
it's was 78. 78. Mm -hmm. Now, this is my problem. Well, this is my question for you. When you told me the formula, you said pi r squared h. We know pi is what? 3.14. 3.14. Yes. But it's saying r squared. Where do we get r from? What is it's the, the r radius. Here for? It's, it's the, the radius. radius. They didn't give us the radius. You got to well, get it from the you diameter. You got to get it from the formula. You got to have to, not from the formula, you get it from the, the diameter. diameter. Well, yeah, so, I know that. Yeah. 30. So if the diameter so is 30. 60, the radius is what? 30. 30. 30. Because it's the half. radius is half the diameter. So now, yeah. now, even though they didn't give it to us, we can, we can get that because we know the diameter. If we know the diameter, we know the radius. If we know yeah. the radius, we can get the diameter. So that's a, another given. So 3.14. And now I'm going to use parentheses for multiplication. Mm -hmm. 30 squared, mm -hmm. which is R squared. And what's my height? 78. 78. 78. Look how fast I did. I put everything right in my calculator. And I have my answer 220,428. Now, the last thing I need you to remember, this is very important. A young lady um, sent me an email. And it had something like this. Say the answer was 2,000 or 220,428. So this is A. Say B was the same thing. 2,220,428 square inches. Mm. Now, on the calculator, she got 220,428. She didn't know whether it was cubic inches or oh, square so inches. Oh. Can anybody tell me how you differentiate if you're trying to find volume? If is it cubic inches or square inches? Cubic inch, because you said it's three-dimensional. Who said that? That's cute. Yeah. That's the, see, how, yeah. see how you see how I, that's how I, I try to emphasize certain words so you understand, so you have a conceptual yeah. understanding. So that cubic inches is with the third power is because yeah. it's three dimensions. Your volume yeah. is always three going to be cubic three, or yeah. to the third power. Your, yeah. your area which is only two dimensions, will always be square or to the second power. So remember, mm -hmm. when you have mm -hmm. cubic inches, it could be written as cubic inches like that, oh, or feet. it could be inches to the third. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how you identify what is to the third or second power. Very good. Very good. So that's a word problem that has to do with volume, right? So good, good. Very good. So um, listen, listen, listen. Again, we use, so look, look at this problem. We identified our givens, right? That's the first mm -hmm. thing we did. We, uh, we also identified what our diameter was. We had to identify what our radius was. We then went to our formula sheet. You don't have to remember every formula, but it will be advantageous for you to know all your formulas. If you got to go to your formula sheet every single minute, it's going to give you a, you, that's wasting time. So what I would do is like on uh, um, um, quizzes, um, um, I have a, a quiz for your formulas. So you can mm -hmm. test it so you make sure you... But what you want to remember is every time you practice math, you need to have your calculator, your scrap paper, and your formula sheet. Right. So we identified our givens, we went to our formula sheet, we went, uh, got to our formula, and all we did was plug everything in. All we did was plug everything in. For most of the exam, that's what you can do. Okay, so that's the word problem of volume. Okay, let's try. Let's try. Let's try to find another word problem. <laughs> let's try to find another word problem. Let me take a screenshot of this so you have it. So if you want to practice that when you get home, you can. And let's see. Let's see if we can find another word problem. I don't know why. So, oops. Uh, let's see, let's see. I got a bunch of them. I got a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. I, I did so many questions today. It was incredible. <laughs> let's try uh, functions. Let's try functions. Okay. Functions, functions. Okay. Let me see if I got any word problems with functions. I might not have any. I think I just did compute. There we go, right there. I like it. This is, okay, boom, right there. There's a word problem right there. I love it. I, this may be indicative of something you may see. So you have yeah. to be ready for it. So let's look okay. at this problem again. Okay. Jessica is looking at two websites that allow customers to print their own designs on t-shirts. 
One website charges $20 per t-shirt plus a $24 shipping charge. The other website used the equation C equal 24N because it has free shipping. To find the total cost C of printing N t-shirts. What is the difference in the cost of each website if Jessica orders 100 t-shirts? Oh my goodness. That's a headache. That, just, have a that headache. just gave me a headache. <laughs> but listen, this is what I need you to do. Really. And this is, this, is, this is why it's very important. This is why you need to hear me in your ear. You yeah. need to hear me say, identify what's You're given. Kidding. Okay, because then you have a process. Then you don't have to get all frustrated and anxious. You have a process that you're going to do to solve any problem. You already know, because Mr. Tinsley told you, easy, medium, hard. The questions are going to be easy, medium, hard. And since you've been practicing with the time test on his Schoology website, you know that you should be able to finish this at most three minutes. So let's look at it. What's given? Tell me what's given. Uh, well, we got two websites. Okay. Okay, you got I two sites. I can't see it because I'm on my phone with the first one website says. So it said the one website charges $20 per t-shirt plus okay. $24 shipping. Yeah, that's the first. That's the, for the first okay. uh, website. Okay. That's the second, the other website used the equation C, C equal 24N. 24N, yeah. Where T total, or C the, is the total cost. Total cost, yeah. And N is the number of t-shirts. Right. Now, the last thing you want to realize is what are they asking? What is the, the difference in the, the order difference. for the, t the two websites, the 22 websites? So what, what would be my function or my equation for the first website? F parentheses, he. I can't see it. Um, Okay, I don't, um, I don't know what I was doing. So let me ask you a question. So a lot of people, again, this is, a, this is a word problem, right? And people have a lot of problems with word problems, right? Let me ask you something. If you ordered one t-shirt from the first website, how much would it cost you? I, uh, I can't see the price. 40, for the first website? Mm -hmm. How much it cost? $44. How did you get $44? We, we were adding. 20 no, plus 24. Me. Okay, 20 plus 24. How did you get to 20? Um, we, add, we added uh, two. No, wait. I was doing it. It says $20. That's sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Plus so how, $20 shipping. Tell me how did you get to 20? $20 per shirt. Mathematically, how did you get 20? Why didn't you say 40? Why didn't you say 60? Why didn't you say 80? How did you know it's only $20? Because one website charges $20 per t shirt. Okay. If, right. So how'd you get the 20? How'd you get the number 20? Because um, it's on the problem. It's on the word problem. So, okay. So, all right. So, this is one t shirt. That's the one. How, how, how much it cost for two t-shirts? $40. 40. It would be $40. Plus, plus, plus shipping? Yeah. How did you get the 40? I got 40, so I got it. Uh, the two. Exactly. So this is, this is the point I'm trying to make. So for this one, you said 20 times two plus 24. For the first one, you did 20 times one because it was only one shirt that you bought. So if you notice, to buy the third shirt, it'll be 20 times 3 Please. plus 24. If you <laughs> notice, that number, 1, 2, 3, is changing depending upon how many t-shirts you buy. That's what's variable. It's changing. So here, my, my function is going to be 20 in plus 24. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where N is the number of t-shirts. The second website is just 24N. Everybody understand that? Because they have free shipping, correct? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, who said wow? No, I'm saying they got free shipping. I like that. Okay. Well, well uh, again, um, and, and it's funny. Uh, this this uh, is funny because I actually, uh, I used to sell t-shirts. Right. And one of the reasons why I chose the place I bought 
is not only the quality of the t-shirts, but they had free shipping on no matter how many shirts I bought. Yes, I like that. So, uh, but they were more expensive for each t-shirt. So in this case, each t-shirt here is going to cost me $24. And the other mm -hmm. site, the website, the other site is only $20. So, so mm -hmm. now I want to see if I save money. So if, yep. I, if, I, if I'm going to order 100 t-shirts, how am I yep. going to know how much each is going to cost? Because you're going to have to multiply. So multiply. in the first website, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. 20 times 100? 20 times yeah. 100 mm -hmm. plus, plus 24. Plus What's 20 times 100? 2,000. Mm -hmm. What's 2,000 plus 24? 2024. 2024. 2024. Okay, good. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, how are we going to find the cost if we use the second website? 24 mm -hmm. times 100. 24 times 100. What's 24 times 100? 2400. 2400. So we know the cost of ordering 100 t shirts from website, the second website. We know how much mm -hmm. it costs to buy 100 t shirts from the first website. Now, but that's not the question. The question is, what's the difference in cost? So we what will we do to those two numbers? We got to subtract. Subtract them. them. So again, the seventy-six. Oh, sorry. Three seventy-six. Three seventy-six. So something that looked like a hard word problem really was not. So again, you can't listen. One of the things I want you to understand is when you're taking this test, you should have practiced enough on Schoology and been to my Monday sessions enough where you know you're not going to get nervous, you're not going to get anxious, you're not going to get frustrated. Because if you do, you should be hearing me in your, in your ear. Skip it, flag it for review, come back to it. Don't let any problem frustrate you enough for either you spending too much time on it or you ruin your, your, you ruin your confidence. So if it's too hard, Pick A or D, skip it, flag it for review, come back to it after you finish the exam. You need to understand that's one of the most important pieces of advice that I could give you. Yeah. Don't let one or two problems shake you. A or D, flag it for review, come back to it. All right. Now, any other questions? Any other concepts people had issues with? Okay, now, this, this is what I'm going to do for the day. Okay, uh -oh. over the weekend, I had a bunch of people, I mean, uh, uh, during this week, uh, last week, I had a lot of people pass, but I've also checked a lot of people's work with the first five. And what I noticed is a lot of people had issues with the first five. So a lot of adult educators might say, oh, it's not that important. Don't worry about it. It's not, listen, I disagree wholeheartedly. This is why. During that first five, that's basic math. If you get the first five questions wrong, what's your confidence? What's going to happen to your confidence? It's, it's going to go down. Good. It's, it's going to go down. Good. It's going to yeah. shake you. But if you get the first five right, you you feeling good about yourself already. So this is it's very important that you get the first five. So what we're going to do here, we got about 30 minutes left. And it's about this test, this quiz is about 25 minutes, right? And I've did this before with, um, uh, uh, it's called quizzes. And this is some things that's on my website. And I, and I do apologize. I don't know what's wrong with my website going on right now. It says it's not secure. But let me just let you know that when you, if you purchase something, anything you purchase is going outside of the website and it is secure. So you don't have to worry about your information, your credit card information getting stolen if you haven't bought it already. But I'm 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 in the, I'm trying to fix that now. So let's let's start this quiz of the first five. Let's do classic. And what I need you to do, I need you to open up another tab besides the Zoom. I need you to I need you to open up another another tab besides your Zoom tab. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to this website. As you're going to go to, I don't know why my computer is acting. So joinmyquiz.com. Joinmyquiz.com. And you're going to enter the code you see on the screen. Did I ever start to record? 487218. 487218. 487-218.
joinmyquiz.com. All right. I don't know what just happened. And I want you to go through these problems as quick as you can to see if you can answer these questions. Okay. Again, joinmyquiz.com. The code is 487218. Uh-uh. I don't like this because I don't have my calculator with me. Oh, okay. Joinmyquiz.com and the code is right at the top, 487218. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a slow one here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Joinmyquiz.com. Am I and the on it? Code is 487218. Oh, this is okay. And you got about a minute for each problem. That's it. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, and you made it. Worry. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, man. Okay. Um. Oh, what it is now. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Wait a minute. This is a uh... Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. 
Okay. Um. Okay, that's it. Okay. I don't know that's all. Stop. Um. It's five. Okay. I put my stuff. All right. Huh. Um, okay. Oh, they're going to give me a second chance. Okay. 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 Mm. 
Mm. Oh man, I'm going to try that one. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, I did it the wrong way. So I do want to have time to go ah. over some of these. So right now I'm going to end this. I okay. will send you the link so you can take it on your own. But I'm, I am going to end this for right now. Okay. Now, one thing we want to know is the 60% accuracy, right? So let me end this now. <clears throat> See all our stuff? So yeah. now, um, where was it? Review questions. Here we go. Ah. All right, let's let, let's look at these questions. Mm. Okay, so one of the questions that you're probably going to get is put fractions, decimal, percents in order. Yeah. So the so first thing you're going to recognize is it says from least to greatest. What you want the key? Yeah. From least to greatest. So. What's the lowest one here? One half, 0 0.007, 0 0.73, 70%, or 112, 112%. Which one is the lowest? 0 0.007. 0 0.007. So to me, what I would do is I would look at my multiple choice and see which one start with 0 0.007. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. I'm done. There's no more work for you to do. A lot of people, what they're doing is that's 0 0.5. That's 0 0.007. That's 0 0.73. That's 0 0.70. That's yeah. 1.12. And then add zeros so you can compare them. So I need to add three zeros here. I mean, two zeros here. Add one here. Add one here. That's what a lot of people are doing. First thing, let's look at the lowest one that you can easily see, 0 0.007. Now you can get you, that done. You can get that question done quickly. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Again, now this one says from greatest to least. Which one do you think is the largest one? 85. 85%. So instead mm -hmm. of doing 0 0.5, 0 0.33, 0 0.25, 0 0.01, 0 0.85, let's look at the one that's greatest. Let's look at the one that starts with 85%. So we know it's not this one. We know it's not mm -hmm. that one. What's next? Yeah. This one has one half, which that's is 0.5, yeah. or, or 1%. 50. Which one? That's 50. 0 0.50, yeah. 0 0.01. Yeah. We can now yeah. got our answer. Yeah. 15 to 30 seconds. Okay, again, so you want to get in the habit of being able to look, understand those multiple choice. Now, how many people got this right? Most people got this right. I did, yeah. This is yeah. an absolute value. So four is A. So you got the absolute value of minus four. Minus B is mm -hmm. three. 
Mm -hmm. So the absolute value of negative seven, what's the absolute seven. value of negative seven? Seven. Positive seven. Positive seven. Positive seven. seven. Again, that's another one you have to be prepared for. Now, this is a tricky question. Most people got this wrong. I sure did. <laughs> Listen, this is yeah. a, a not like a trick, but you got to know, remember, for example, it's... two squared is four. Square root of four is two. So the square root of four is two. Three squared is nine. The square root of nine is three. Yeah, yeah. So, but if you realize that, what you notice is square root and square cancel each other. So they cancel. So it should have been X equal five. five. Yeah. And that, that's what my gut said, push five. Mm. <laughs> they, they love, they listen, they love that question. Okay, Most cool. people got this right. Seven squared. Actually, everybody got it right. So 49 minus nine is 40. So that everybody got that right. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Now, listen, I was a little I was a little concerned with this one. Everybody got this right. But the time it took for people to do this problem. Listen, your answers, you got a 0. 0.48, 4.8, 48 and 480. You don't even what, what people were doing was they were doing this. Five times two is ten. Okay, you don't have to do all that. Let's estimate. This is closer to three. This is closer to two. What's yeah. three times two? Six. six. What is the only answer near six? 4.8. Done. Yeah. Done. Again, you have to look at those multiple choices. Sometimes you don't have to do all the work in order to get your answer. Again, 0 0.01, 0 0.11, 1, or 10. Most people got this wrong. Okay. First of all, we know 20 times five is a hundred. Yeah. How many times do we have to move the decimal twice? One, two. Yeah. One is the answer. I, I didn't see these. <laughs> yeah, I might have cut it off. You know, everybody got oh. different different problems okay. at different times. It was random. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, most most people got this right. This is one of the most missed questions on the GED. What values of X make this undefined. You're going to look at your denominator. Yeah. You have two X's in the denominator. So they're going to be two values that can make the denominator zero. So of course it's zero because zero times anything is zero, right? Because yeah. you have yeah. X times X plus three. So X could be zero. And what's the opposite of plus three? Negative, Negative three. Negative three. I think I got that one right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to see that. You're pro you better be ready for that one. Same thing here. Your denominator can't be zero. So X, now most people got this wrong. Why? Mm -hmm. People picked five and seven and minus three. Remember, what makes what something undefined? Either the denominator can't be zero or you can't have a negative square root. So right. when you see the word undefined, you're thinking my denominator can't be zero and I can't have a I negative square root. Right. There is no square root in this problem. So we're going to look at the denominator. Maybe the maybe opposite maybe. of five is what? Negative, negative five. I think Easy I got problem. That right. So again, most people got this problem wrong. If you see undefined, it's very important. Denominator can't be zero. You can't have a negative square root. That's right. Okay, that's okay. Okay, which expression is undefined in a set of real numbers? Is it zero over minus six? Is it six six to the zero? Is it square root of negative eight? So most people answered the square root of negative eight. Well, I just told you your denominator can't be zero, you can't have a you negative have square a negative. root. That's zero right. divided by minus six is zero. Anything mm -hmm. to the zero power is one. Yeah. And zero to the fourth power is zero. Everybody understand that? Yes. Okay. So now I don't want to go through all of them. Let's see. This is about half and half. The greatest common factor. Oh, is it? Okay. So this is the last one we're going to do for the night. And okay. then you'll be able to take this quiz over. I'll send you the link. When I send you the uh, uh, YouTube video and the screenshots, I'll include this link so you can take this over because this okay. is important. This first five is important. The greatest common factor. Can anybody tell me the factors of 21? Uh, 27, 1, 3, 3, 7, 21, 3, 7. Yeah. Okay, so see what I did. I've I made pairs. 
One yep. times 21 is 21. Three mm -hmm. times seven, seven is, 21. is 21. So you find the factor pairs to find your factors. It's much easier that way. 56. Yep. Now we're just going to go two. right in order. One times 56. Mm -hmm. We two. know two goes into 56. Two times what? Ooh, what? Uh, 28. 28. Three can't go into 56. Again, remember I told you one of the most important things you can learn seven. from math is knowing your multiplication tables Table. up to 12. Yeah. Three seven. does not go into 56. Does four go into 56? Yeah. How many times? She said, yeah. Yes, four 14. goes in here. 14. Does Three five times. go into 56? No. Does six mm -hmm. go into 56? No. Does seven go into 56? Yes. yes. Seven times what? Eight. 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 So Eight. now, those are your factors of 56. What are your greatest common factor? What is the greatest number in both lists? Seven. 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 Yeah. That's how you find your greatest common factor. Now, for the last one, I want to go over this. I want to find a word problem first. Because a lot of people get this wrong. Something like this. Most people got this question wrong. I need you to understand this. Okay, Magellan has decided to make party baskets for the fundraiser. Balloons are sold in bags of 20. Party horns are sold in bags of 10. Yep. Eight candy bars in a package. How many of each should he buy so that are an equal number of balloons, horns, and candy bars? So what you're going to do is this is a word problem for your least common multiple. So yeah. we're going to do 20, 20, 40, 60, 80. 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. How, how do you know when to stop, Mr. Tenzi? Sometimes you don't. What I usually do is I'll ask myself, I'll use the highest number, and I yeah. know multiples of the highest number, and I'll ask, do the other two go into it evenly? For example, yes. does 8 go into 20? No. Does 8 no. go into 40? Yes. Yes. So instead of doing 8, 16, 24, 32, yeah, 40, Instead of doing that, you could just ask yourself, okay, 20, 40, 60, 80. Does 10 go into 20? Yes. Does 10 go yeah. into 40? Yes. 10 yeah. go into 60? Yes. 10 go into 80? Yes. So we yeah. 10 will go in all of them. Now you go to 8. Okay. Does 8 go into 20? No. Does 8 go into 40? Yes. That's yeah. how I know 40 is going to be in all three lists. Your least yes. common multiple. So yeah. 40 would be your answer here. That's what I put. Yeah. Okay. God. So I'm, I'm going to send you this link. I want you to be ready for this exam. And one of the things to help you get ready for this exam is to make sure you at least get three out of the first five. That's your yeah. goal. So on this test, you want about a 60% or higher. Okay? I was, I was on my way. And I just had to stop it early because um, um I, I, and, I'm just going, I, and I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes I go after seven, but um, it's, it's, it's playoff right. time. It, it's playoff time. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I want to watch too. <laughs> Mr. Tizzy, I had a question. This is Maria Rose. I was How trying to get on. I'm good. I was trying to get on Schoology, mm -hmm. but it's saying that my email address it, um, is not connected to that website. So I don't know what am I doing incorrectly. Right, I'll send. I'll send you how to access. Did you sign up before? I did. Remember, I have. I passed my GED, but I'm going to college, so I need to have this. Okay. Yeah, oh, that was back in February. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so, okay. so what I'll what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll um I'll, I'll gain access. I'll okay. give you access, and what I'll do is, um, I'm going to reset your password, and I'm okay. going to send you that password. That way, you can use the login. Okay. Thank um, you. they okay. I I did the school thing. Okay. Great. Great. And, I, right. and do you need me to sign in to quiz well or? no 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 that's actually on my website i'm gonna see that link my website is having some issues right now saying it's not okay. secure which i don't okay. understand why but um okay. what okay. i can do valencia right now is i'm going to accept you into the schoology cast right now so all you would have to do when you go back to uh back to schoology.com is you use your login so i just accepted you right now so i'll show you real quick boom i'm gonna accept you right now look at that Boom, accept you. And now you'll be able to log in to Schoology using the username and password you just created. Okay? Yeah. Right. All right. Everybody yeah. have a wonderful night. It's been a pleasure. Yeah.
Yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.